Pills are neutral in Chinese medicine. Things got a wild last night. <laughs> That's crazy to hear that point of your life and then see how many like loving people are in your life now. Because otherwise it's just going to be stuck in your genital area when it could go everywhere. That's why it's also really good to have your breast massaged. Oh. <sighs> I really connect with horses. Oh yeah, you're a horse girl. <laughs> you're effing weird. Top horse. choice, but I'm gonna have to go with horses. Like, I don't know how to kiss anymore. Oh my god. My tongue is gonna fall off. Have you hooked up with any girls? It was really intense. I can't believe I put her through that. Hello guys, thank you so much for choosing to join this sleepover. My first guest is none other than Hitomi Wachizuki, one of my favorite content creators that I've been watching for like the past six years of my life. Before we get onto this video, I really want to thank today's sponsor and that is BetterHelp. I'm so grateful to them for providing accessible worldwide counseling available in multiple different languages. It's through their platform that I discovered therapy for the first time this year. They have a super easy quiz that you can do to assess your needs to match you with the most suitable counselor. It's super easy to find someone who matches your schedule perfectly and you can either video, text, or call, which I prefer the most. BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional therapy, plus they provide financial aid. So if you're looking for guidance in your healing journey or your personal growth, you can check out BetterHelp in the link down below and get 10% off your first month. Let's go! Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> something you talked about going through when you were younger. Yeah. Until I was like 18. When did that start? I think it was around the time that I lost my virginity. Really? And so much of my like self-worth just became so shaky when I started to get attention from guys because uh, it was just like not love, you know? Yeah. And when I, you're 12, that's like grade eight yeah i i lost my virginity really young from this guy who was a senior no actually he was a sophomore that would be really creepy if <laughs> it was just like a lot it was one of my sister's friends and i remember she like beat me up after it happened even though i was like i didn't really want it to happen like that and it was like so much like there's just no place where i could find love and safety i felt like oh my god yeah Oh my god, to be beat up after your food. <laughs> I know. Oh. I had like a fat lip for like a few days and my parents, like it's so weird that they just saw these things but didn't know what to make of it or what to yeah. do. So much of it just stemmed from lack of love. My ex-boyfriend really helped me with that because I stopped cutting myself for a little bit because this was from like 12 to 18. So like mm -hmm. there were waves where it was bad and then waves where it wasn't as bad. Mm -hmm. And then um, I wasn't cutting myself, but when I fell in love with him, I was so afraid of giving my heart to someone, and I just constantly felt anxiety ridden because I didn't know if I could trust him or if it was safe mm -hmm. to be seen. And so I started cutting myself, and he would see these like marks on my body, and he had never been with someone who did that. I was at his house for Thanksgiving, and I got drunk because I was around his family, and family mm -hmm. isn't something that I'm like always really familiar with. Yeah. And I felt really guilty for not being with mine, and so I like cut myself a lot, oh like really God. badly in the shower after, and oh I just like God. passed out in his bed, and he saw me, he saw like that my wrist was bleeding, oh and he freaked God. out, and it was really intense. I can't believe I put him through that. But he was just like, you have to promise me you're never going to do this again, and I was like, okay, okay, I won't, I won't, and it was so vulnerable, and I haven't cut myself since he asked me not to. Oh my god. I like forget that that person is in me or like was me at one point and I'm so proud that I made it through that. I'm such a long way. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so grateful for everything I learned from not cutting myself anymore either because 
anytime I had anxiety, it was like a clear choice to either just physically hurt myself or do something good for myself. Mm. And then it got easier to be like, oh, I'm just going to call someone or mm. I'm going to like make myself a good meal or yeah. just go for a walk. Yeah. And now it's like really easy for me to check in and implement those things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you've become oh, so good at it. I know. <laughs> You're a pro. The wrist is stronger than the blade. We were talking and I was like, okay, I'm not gonna message him anymore because like I just really wanna know if the Illuminati is real. <laughs> I just wanna ask that question. Wait, to him or the healer? Apples are neutral in Chinese medicine. Mm. But I think with the cinnamon, it adds like a heat to it. Mm -hmm. And it just feels so warm in my tummy. Mm -hmm. Have you hooked up with any girls? <coughs> no, I've never. In high school, I think that's when I learned about the Kinsey scale and psychology, where it's like everyone's on a spectrum. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I'm definitely like 100% on the straight side because I've just like never even like thought about being with a girl or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I remember it's actually in a design studies class where my teacher showed us a lot of like queer readings and reintroduced the scale. But through the, the class is called image and influence. Mm -hmm. So talking about how the imagery surrounding us through media and our life influences like and shapes who we are. Mm -hmm. And in that way, I was like, oh my God, I'm like thinking about Heteronormativity. Yeah, I was like, oh, I didn't know that was a thing, like my naive high school self. But I just think that, like, even with my early experiences with men or boys, really, <laughs> I was never the one to initiate. Like, I don't think I ever woke up one day with this, like, extreme hormonal desire to be with men or, like, males. <laughs> and pursue them. Yeah, I think it was, like, through the process of being pursued, feeling, like, wanted through this process, feeling like it validated or made me feel like I was pretty or, like, worthy. Like, I don't think I ever felt pretty until it was, like, boys giving me attention because that just feels like what it's meant in society exactly. to be beautiful is to be seen by the opposite gender we learned that at such a young age even yeah, through like disney, disney fairy tales yeah thanks a lot disney. <laughs> yeah and i think through that experience i'm just like picturing in a world where i see women having relationships with each other like if i had grown up around that i think i would have been just <coughs> open to it and then i think when that shift in my mind happened i remember there was one girl in one of my classes who who I was just like so in awe of. I just found her like so beautiful mm -hmm. and she was like so smart and I just like really liked her energy. She had this like Leo energy that mm -hmm. is just like, oh, I love it. <laughs> like kind of introverted, but like very, I think like very firm yeah. and like comfortable, grounded in who she is. Oh, and I was like, yeah. I think that was the first time where I felt like, wow, I really had a crush on a girl, and I was, like, imagining what it'd be like to kiss this person, mm. and I was like, okay, like, maybe I'm not as straight as I thought I was. <laughs> yes. I'm very curious to know what your journey with that was like. I knew that I liked girls really early on because I was always oh. checking them out, and wow. I would have sleepovers, and I had a crush on this one girl who was kind of a friend, but she was more of my friend's friend. Mm. I specifically remember, I think this was in sixth grade, before I actually lost my virginity to a boy, that I really just wanted her to wake up and kiss me, and I told my sister that I check out girls and that I think I'm bisexual from like eighth grade, mm -hmm. and she was like, all girls do that, you're just comparing your body to their body, oh. and I was like, oh yeah, totally, but I knew that's mm. not what it was, and then in eighth grade, I kissed this girl on my couch in my living room and it just felt so good and wow. fun. She was my friend and we would like party and do stuff like that mm. together so it just naturally happened. Oh my gosh, I don't think people in my white suburb even knew that like <laughs> I think it was maybe in high school that we there was like we saw lesbian couple maybe like in 10th grade or something but that's crazy that you were like so exposed or like knowing of that at a young age <laughs> yeah I, I also had older siblings so that probably helped oh like, okay yeah all older siblings <laughs> 
And then the first time I had sex with a girl was also it was in freshman year of high school, mm. and I moved to a school that was like way more inclusive and had so many queer people. Wow. And girls would have like lesbian in their Instagram bio, and I wasn't out yet or didn't mm. call myself anything, so I was so excited. Anytime I saw that, I would That's like so cute. have my eye. <laughs> Ooh. I saw this girl at a concert who I knew was lesbian because she had it in her Instagram bio, and I low key beeline towards her like dancing, but then this is what happens sometimes like we just fell in love i i feel like we just like saw each other and we just started like dancing and making out wow and like holding each other and stroking each other oh my god and then we just started hanging out all the time mm-hmm. and going on dates and i felt like just really safe and comfortable every time i was hanging out with her and really mm. like interested in her but then mm-hmm. every time i was done hanging out with her I would get so much anxiety because I felt like it was wrong. Oh, and it was so painful to have such a fun experience and feel safe, but also almost be disassociating and then have anxiety. And that lasted for like three months and then I ended it because it felt so wrong. And I think it was just the internalized homophobia of like, it's not right. And people were looking at us and mm. things like that, like at museums. And yeah. That's kind of how it was for a while. I would randomly, like, hook up with a girl or, like, sleep with a girl in New York who was, like, in my friend group. And then I went to Cuba with these two friends. And this girl texted me saying she had a crush on me, but I had no service the whole trip. And we were all in bed on the last night, and I saw her text that said she had a crush on me. And then we just started making out and hooking up. We didn't, like, fully have sex but I don't know for some reason after that experience like mm-hmm. the anxiety was totally gone and I was like wow yeah. nice <laughs> I don't know why but I just felt so liberated and for me I really enjoy having sex with women but I don't know what it would feel like to have a long-term relationship with a woman mm. some part of me feels like it'd be too easy or something <laughs> Not enough triggers for my personal growth to be with someone so compassionate, loving, and understand. Yeah. Right. <laughs> when you're talking about like just like making out, kissing these girls, I'm like in such awe because I feel like I'm so shy when it comes mm. to stuff like that. Even with guys, I'm like never the initiator mm. until maybe like five guys in, and there's like another <laughs> guy that I was slept with who was also virgin who like never kissed and in that situation I was like more bold okay I see but that. like yeah every time before that I'm like I never initiate things mm-hmm. and I feel like girls in general at least are a bit more shy maybe but I think it depends how in touch you are with your own masculine hmm which is yeah. a fun thing yeah that's true I girls. just feel like it was so nerve-wracking. I'm like, I've never kissed a girl. <laughs> I don't know why I'm like, I don't know how to kiss anymore. Oh my god. My tongue is gonna fall off. <laughs> I'm like so nervous. I'm so sweaty. <laughs> That's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like so nervous. Boys, I'm like, been there, done that. <laughs> what day. about like drunk? making out or like hooking up with a friend because I feel like that's how most I like people. don't drunk hook up with people okay not even in like freshman year like no okay I remember once in high school there was like this guy on Dutch exchange and then he was just like very flirty from the beginning I was just like ooh like attention from this like this foreign Dutch boy like interesting mm. even though I wasn't like enamored with him I didn't really know that much about his personality couple days in, he was like very flirty with like this girl from another school and then I was like, ew. <laughs> I was like, I don't like that. I only like attention towards me. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, if you're gonna go around giving attention to other people, I'm gonna do that too. And I remember like there's like a gala with all the exchange kids from other high schools and I was just like in social butterfly mode like talking <laughs> to all That's the boys. So funny. And he was just like sitting there like at the table like and I was like, yeah, you're going to flirt with one girl? Watch me go flirt with 20 guys. Oh my god, the tiny is. <laughs> yeah, honestly. I think yeah. flirting is more enjoyable to me than um, hooking up with someone that I don't find that I'm like super attracted to. Because I do remember mm. hooking up with him at the last night mm. of this like party. And I just felt so gross after. Like I just went home feeling like, bleh, <sighs> like really icky. The egg. Yeah. And then yeah. I think that's 
That was probably only in grade 10, but I think at that point I was just like, I don't want to do that again. That's for the best. It took me literally like five years to learn how to pat myself, but it doesn't feel fulfilling to just look mm. up with people. Your, your spirit just like knows that if sharing your energy like that is way too sacred yeah. to do it. And, but at that party, I was really drunk. Okay, let me... <laughs> I was super drunk, and then I went home like more sobered up, and I was just like, ew. You know yeah. how many people do that? Like throughout all of their early 20s, like that's their experience is like hooking up with people drunk and then being like, fuck. Like, really? Yeah. Repeatedly. So, like, it's really good that you... Like, it's good that I got that out of my system at age 14, and I didn't have to experience that more when I was more sexually active. Oh, my gosh. Yes. I really like hooking up with women because I do feel more in touch with my masculine. Mm. A lot of times when I'm with women, my masculine side just comes out more, like, in the way Where that you're more outgoing, or, like... I'm more forward and willing and able to, like, make the first move wow. or just, like, be the man. It's really weird. Like, just be the man and, like, cook mm. and, like, kill spiders and, like, hold <laughs> the heavy bags and open the doors. Yeah. There's something in me that just turns on and it's just like, oh, my God, I need to, like, worship you. Oh, <laughs> that's sweet. <laughs> Even though I'm not, I'm, like, verse in the bedroom, like, sexually, I guess. People have used strap-ons on me and stuff like that. It's not super defined in that way. Mm -hmm. But I definitely feel more powerful when I'm with women almost because mm -hmm. it evokes that, like, strength. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. For some reason with women, it feels less of this, like, karmic tie that's formed because they're not penetrating into you for some mm -hmm. reason. Like, I feel like the energy from a penis going inside of you is just different from, like, fingers or yeah. a dildo or something. Yeah. So I don't feel like as hurt or like vulnerable hooking up with women also mm. but that's just my experience no yeah. i definitely think with penetrative sex like after that happens there's like s such a bond that's formed mm -hmm. yeah it makes me more cautious um <laughs> who and when i would like someone <laughs> to <laughs> penetrate yeah. Okay. Enter into my temple. I feel like I will randomly get flashbacks or memories of random people who I had really long periods of time like sleeping with, and I feel like it's because they're still like existing in my womb or they're. Oh my god! No, I remember you talking about there. that in one of your videos, and I was like, <gasps> I was like, is anyone in there? <laughs> everyone like hello hi david i love you bobby <laughs> there is one guy that i slept with that uh, bobby <laughs> timmy tom turner <laughs> timmy turner <laughs> um that we just like ended on really weird like a mutual ghost type of situation and like yeah whenever i think of this person having had this like penetrative experience with them it makes me feel like not super comfy mm. whereas like the exes that I've had the other ones that where we like had a really a longer relationship where we really like talked through how we felt and we talked through our parting mm. I don't feel like any type of negative sentiment in my body whenever the thought of them passes my mind I think it's because you probably cut that karmic tie if there's any like energy being shared between you because it ended amicably or yeah. with closure it's like but if you want to cut any karmic ties with anyone, get a black candle and write different things on it, like into the wax candle mm. symbols that remind you of them and burn it. And that's just one ritual to kind of cut a karmic cord with someone mm. and praying upon it and visualizing a color or a light and like connecting you to that person and being literally cut wow. and reclaiming any energy of yours that they have. Whoa. I just thought I had to talk to them at some point. <laughs> or you can do that. Like, it, that might be really easy and accessible. I love that there's like two very different options. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes both are necessary. Yeah, do a little bit of both. Really mixing. I remember the first time I felt the ick when I was hooking up with this um, senior when I was a freshman. Mm -hmm. And I lied to my dad, and my dad literally dropped me off at his house, and I said it was one of my girlfriend's houses. Oh no. Like, he, he was too naive to check and be like, right. is your mom home? And so we just were hooking up the whole weekend and then he dropped me off and I, it was like a Sunday afternoon and I tried to do 
different things like play lacrosse or do my homework mm-hmm. or take a nap and I just felt this hole in my heart that was this oh, egg that was like no. huh huh and I think that was my first experience of shame it was like oh. mm, that that didn't that wasn't honoring to my body and my yeah. whole body feels like that wasn't right and I don't feel that way at all anymore and I'm really happy <laughs> that's great that's good yeah we're learning oh <laughs> Should we build the floor or should we? <laughs> Let's build a floor! Oh, that's not four, we can draw inside of it. <laughs> yeah, I like that idea. Okay. I think if you're a good kisser with a man, you would cringe like to be. I feel like every time I haven't kissed someone in a long time, I'm always like, I forgot! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know where I'm quivering. <laughs> I remember after like my first partner, I was like, oh, now I can like experiment with other men, and then I was so worried that I would forget how to kiss. <laughs> I was like, I've never slept with anyone else, what if I don't know how? And then when we did <laughs> kiss, it felt so natural, and it was like, honestly, the best kiss that I had in my life. Oh my so it was gosh. like, just like melting, when people were like, and then like, you see fireworks and all those like teen books. I was like, that's not real. And then yeah. I was like, oh my god, it is real. <laughs> but I think my kissing experience just have felt like, yeah, it's very impacted by the guy because mm-hmm. I find men try to like really control the rhythm. Yeah. And then when they're not good at it, I'm just like, oh, oh. like how do you take over? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like close their jaw <laughs> and open it. Just stop. <laughs> Maybe you can put that under here or Ooh, up here. Damn, it's been so long since I built a fort. I'm out of practice. Yeah, but it's such a My nice inner child nice. would not be proud of me right now. Keep your inner child alive, folks. Don't let it die. Build a fort today. <laughs> Buildafort.com. 1 800 Build a Fort. We're licensed professionals. <laughs> we'll come scope out your house and build a proper fort for oh, you. Yeah. Wait, maybe that's our business. <laughs> that's our retirement plan after YouTube. We're professional fort builders. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> so cute. Yay. Forts are just the coolest places to hang out. I think so. I think it's confirmed. scientific. <laughs> Let's do a study. Their tone and levels in forts and outer forts. <laughs> yeah. They have a TED talk. Yeah. And it's just like forts and more and like the handshake. <laughs> I wanna love ya and mm. treat you right. Mm. Uh, uh. <laughs> Yo, DJ, put me on his track. Uh, 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 how do you know when you're ready to like be in a relationship? When being with someone else only adds to my life and doesn't jeopardize an ounce of my authentic expression and actually makes me feel more free. That's mm, when I know. More free. Yeah. I think that's that really speaks to me. Well, I'm really excited for this dinner party actually. Now that you brought it up, because I was feeling a little bit anxious about it. I was like, what if it's not good? What if it's not a vibe? But I'm like, actually, it is a vibe. It's gonna be so fun. And everyone's going to love it. I feel so honored that I'm invited. Oh my god, yeah. A dinner party for all my favorite YouTubers to thank you all for your hard work. <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna say like a speech is that gonna go like oh, I that should. this is a gathering for all the people i appreciate on the internet thank you for raising me i think i'm done i i can't pull things <laughs> out of my pull things out of my bum <laughs> what animal represents you what animal do you feel the most connected with? In your drawing or in, in general? Oh, <sighs> I really connect with horses. <laughs> oh yeah, you're a horse girl. <laughs> you effing weirdo. Tough choice, but I'm gonna have to go with horses. <laughs> Horsey. What about you? I feel like I identify with bunnies because I have like buck teeth. I do too, <laughs> kind of. I think they used to be even more prominent when they first grew out because <laughs> I was like so tiny and uh-huh. then I'd have like massive teeth. <laughs> Your dad has teeth like that too. Yeah, yeah. It's so cute. Friends in the family. I love those <laughs> I'm going to draw a horse here. Oh. For my favorite horse girl. Mm. Damn, that's really sweet of you to say. <laughs> <laughs> that's love. Like. There's a lot of horse girls in this world, but there's no only one horse girl in my heart. Running, 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 running
<laughs> yeah, I don't know, but like if you're down, I'm down. <laughs> How do you know when it's the right time to engage with someone physically or intimately? Intimately, when my heart feels safe. Wow. <laughs> it's simple for me, really. Wow. I love that. Because like my heart feels safe, but my head don't know if this is a good choice or not. <laughs> oh, I listen to my heart. Okay, maybe I will too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, because your yoni is a portal to your heart, your cervix is the gateway to the heart, and if your heart doesn't feel safe, you're just gonna be like feeling all types of energy after, oh my God. and you can't have as deep True. of orgasms or invoke that like healing energy that can come from climax because you're not fully opening yourself up to receive. Right. Wow, that explains why, like, even the first time that I slept with one of my past partners. Like, we weren't that close yet, mm. and I just, like, wasn't... I'm, like, physically, everything we're doing is, like, what I like, but yeah. I'm, like, very disassociating right now during the process. I'm not, like, in it. Definitely. I've had that happen before. That's why it's also really good to have your breasts massaged. Oh. As you're getting into sex, because it actually activates your heart space, and... <gasps> In the Taoist lineage, they believe oh. that, um, I guess, like, the binary way is, like, women who mm -hmm. have boobs, mm -hmm. their positive pole is their chest, their heart space. They're like, that's where we project <gasps> energy out. And our negative pole is our yoni, where we receive energy. Wait, what do and you mean it's a negative pole? It's just, like, this, where, like, the energy is coming out of our chest and then it's like Into. coming in through the oh. yoni and for men it's the opposite way around they're projecting energy out from their sacral from their lingam and then receiving energy in from their heart it's like opposite it's kind so of how why... do you penetrate their heart i guess you have to go through their penis <laughs> no i'm just <laughs> kidding and for them to keep like moving the sexual energy throughout your body by like wow. kissing and just bringing your awareness to what? everything going on because otherwise oh it's just going to be stuck in your genital area when it could go everywhere that sounds so magical i feel really good thanks for the hot tip <laughs> i'm gonna also, write it right down in my notebook if you're blindfolded too oh, it yeah, will that's... add to the sensory experience yes <sighs> <laughs> oh how am i supposed to be celibate for a year oh my gosh when i went celibate i was so horny that i was at a psychiatry appointment and i was like trying to seduce my freaking male psychiatrist like, <laughs> flirting with him and like sliding my sh like my sweater off slowly oh my and i had God. like a spaghetti strap top on and i was like so wet and i was listening to hispanic like latin dance music walking home and i was so wet just from the fucking music it was crazy wait why were you trying to be celibate because I was tired of um, hurting people because I kept, like, hooking up with people and either they would fall in love with me or I would get attached to them. And I was like, I'm so sick of this. And I just right. need to be able to say no because mm -hmm. I just wanted friends, but mm -hmm. I kept, like, falling into these little things. And mm -hmm. so I decided to go celibate so I could learn to use my voice. Mm. And I sent out, like, text messages to people who would normally hit me up to hang out and kind of hook up. And mm -hmm. I was like, I'm celibate now, so if you don't want to be in my life, that's totally fine. But mm. I'm just letting you know up front that I'm not someone you can hit up for that. And mm, literally wow. all of them left my life. And I was like, <gasps> I'm glad I know. Like, there was no emotional reaction. It was like, cool, I'm really glad that I know that you just saw me as, like, a booty call. Oh my god. And one of them was like, I love a good Christian girl. I was like, what the fuck? It's not like a <laughs> kinky thing. I'm just That's crazy to hear that point of your life and then see how many like loving people are in your life now. Yeah. You have like zero expectation for that type of relationship. It's so true. Like you've truly come like full <laughs> 180. <laughs> Oh, which gosh. is so amazing by not allowing that low quality nourishment over and over again yeah oh my goodness that was when i first moved to new york so it was hard to make friends initially without being mm. in school or being on social media mm. at that time wow the coolest thing about your channel and also me having watched your videos for like five six years is mm. seeing how much you've grown through Aww. this whole process 
to like this shining, amazing, beautiful, loving light that you are. I remember when I first found you scrolling into your older videos where it's like super like webcam quality. Oh, yeah. and you're like, I found this book about yoga for the first or like <gasps> yeah. Buddhism. And I'm just like, that baby, that baby he so me. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my god, like you've come so far and I'm just so happy and proud of you and oh, oh I can't wait to see like how much you blossom even more in these like decades of life to come because this is only your literal first two decades of living on this oh earth. my god you're right thank you for reminding me <laughs> I've only been alive for like I don't even know an eighth of my life Wait, wait, how long are we living? <laughs> it depends. <laughs> what I really feel like is I've only just started to feel safe in myself and in the world in the last two years. So mm. who knows what else will be born through these feelings of safety and wow. groundedness within myself. Aww. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm like, <laughs> honestly, so honored and happy that I get to meet you in this point of your life and be able to witness firsthand uh -huh. all of like the beautiful changes and seasons that you're gonna go through from mm. here on out thank you so much i hope that we can keep supporting each other in our missions oh, and in every season and just like see each other and be anchors of light in each other's lives because it already feels that way <laughs> oh, i'm so mushy inside <laughs> <laughs> Cool shot, man. Thanks, bro. I'm gonna curl out of here. Can I borrow some toothpaste? Of course. I mean, not borrow. <laughs> you don't want a bag. I spit into your mouth. It's my kink. <laughs> I have fennel in it. Whoa. <laughs> Hopefully, it's okay. Oh, it's Earthy. not licorice flavored. Oh, no, it's fine. I'm not that picky. We'll be in a bit of a pickle. <laughs> Things got wild last night. We brushed our teeth. And we didn't flush. That's me every night. <laughs> I know, I see it. I see the floss there and I'm like, nah. <laughs> we go all the So like and subscribe if you like our remix and we'll be coming out with more videos soon. Rock and roll.